In many ways, the story of the ascension of Jesus, recounted at the very end of the Gospel of Luke and beginning of the book of Acts, is a remarkable, dramatic end to an extraordinary story. A story that began long before with the angel's surprise visit to a young woman and an unexpected pregnancy and a remarkable birth. Today, Luke draws the story to an equally amazing end, with the resurrected Jesus in the presence of his disciples being carried up into heaven and disappearing from their eyes. I find this story really compelling, not just because of the breathtaking occurrence it describes, but because of all the things that have happened around it as Jesus has prepared his disciples for this second departure. We've heard this throughout the gospel lessons for the Sundays of Easter, and we hear it again now. Jesus opens his disciples' minds to understand the scriptures. He declares that they are to be his witnesses. He tells them to wait in the city and do good until the day when he will return. But now he's gone. The Jesus with whom they walked and talked had really gone, and this time for good. And the people Jesus left behind were faced with a challenge. They had to carry on without him. They had to make their own way. They had to do the right thing, even without Jesus telling them what to do. They had to be the fellowship of the people of God, the ecclesia, the church. And they had to do so only with the gifts and tools and skills and knowledge that Jesus had left them. Just as we do. We who are the church today, two millennia later. In some ways, this is like what we've been up against in this time of contagion and quarantine. We've been left to cope with a situation to which we may not feel fully equal. But we're doing what we can, and that is enough. Jesus has given us all we need. Equipped with knowledge, called to be witnesses, given a commandment and a commission, we, God's people, still standing on the ground and looking to the heavens, we await our Lord's return and the fulfillment of all things in him. And, of course, now we await an end to this time of separation. But we do not just sit patiently and wait. We have not simply been left behind to leave a light burning for Jesus, to keep the house clean until he comes back. We're not passive partners. We're not passive partners in God's plan of redemption. Instead, we have become empowered children of God, filled with the Holy Spirit, equipped with the living word we find in Scripture, and called to service to our neighbor. We are the ones whom God has called to be the church in this time and in this place. Jesus has ascended, but we are here. We are still here. And although he has ascended, Jesus is still with us. I see that around me in our synod everywhere I look, in the Zoom and Facebook Live and video worship services, in the Bible studies and musical performances recorded for us, and in all the ways we're staying connected, serving those in need, and keeping the church alive and active even when we can't be together physically. We can do this because Jesus is with us in more ways than the disciples ever imagined before his ascension. In water and the Spirit, in baptism, in the bread and wine of the Eucharist, with us and among us in our faith, our teaching, and our fellowship. Jesus has taught his disciples and us new ways to see him, new ways to feel his presence, ways so intense and close that now we can see his face everywhere around us, in the faces of those we are called to serve. This is the real miracle of the ascension, that in spite of it, Jesus was still with the disciples and is still with us in so many different ways and all the time. Jesus is with us as a consolation. Jesus is with us as a challenge. In word and sacrament, Jesus comforts us and accompanies us on our way and through our lives and struggles from our mother's arms until we are laid to rest. 
In the call to witness to God's love and mercy, Jesus challenges us and gives us a task we can embrace with joy. In his challenge to us to see him in our neighbor, Jesus calls us to humility and service. And Jesus has given us what we need, not just to wait patiently for him, but to engage the world on his behalf and to help others see what we see, to see that the light of Christ shines in each human being, regardless of class, race, gender, or sexual orientation, and that in that light we recognize every human as our relative and our responsibility. Jesus calls us to work in our world, to stay in the city, and to do what we can, right where we are called. Jesus ascended not so that we could stare into the skies in wonder and wait for his glorious return, but so that we could get on with the work of God we are called to do. To worship and praise the God who made us and who loves us in spite of all our weaknesses, and to do that with all our heart and mind and soul, and to love and serve our neighbors as ourselves. And this, dear church, is still what we are called to do. Right here in Los Angeles and beyond, from Long Beach to Templeton, from Lompoc to Laverne, right here in the valleys and hills of Southern California, right here in the city, and right now, even in this time of separation, when the church has never seemed weaker, when faith has never seemed more helpless, even now we are being called to serve. Right here and right now, in this time of quarantine, we are called to be God's hands and feet, God's wallet and God's ballot. And with all we are and with all we have, we are called to be Christ for our neighbor. To a world caught up in self-centeredness and materialism and fear, we are called to point away from ourselves to one who emptied himself for our sake and for whose sake we too live and serve and love. The blessing that Jesus gave his disciples on that hill out in Bethany as he left them behind, that's our blessing too. It's a blessing we can claim and keep and a blessing we can give to others. It's a blessing we can share within the church and it's a blessing we can spread beyond the walls to those who need it. It's a blessing we have now and a blessing we will have forever. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.